Good evening and welcome to the McMillan Candidates Forum presented by a local group of half a dozen or so Get Up members. We have views of course, but tonight no agenda, except to encourage a thoughtful and more informed vote. As part of that, we greatly appreciate the support of the Warrigal Citizen online newspaper for live streaming the event and Community Radio WBR and Gippsland FM who are recording for later broadcast both allowing many who can't be here to also benefit. While the national, parties, the national parties, not the national party, desire for a presidential campaign and the national media's desire to simplify the campaign to some sort of horse race can lead to a disengagement from actual voters, I think it's still important to recognise that we're voting for a local representative who ultimately chooses the leader and supports the policies that are implemented. It's disappointing tonight that the major party candidates have chosen not to attend. This could simply be a timing issue, but the lack of any response does make me wonder if the fact that this electorate is considered safe for liberal, Liberals and therefore Russell Broadbent, uh, and therefore Russell Broadbent simply needs to keep his head down. But I don't quite understand the strategy for Anthony Naus. In any event... I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Then, then somebody else hasn't turned up. Anyway, in any event, it grants more credit to those candidates who have taken the trouble, and in some cases that means a significant road trip, to come to speak to you. That they're all, except for Anthony, so-called small party or independents, raises the old comment, usually from the big parties, that a vote for one of these is a wasted vote. Poppycock. Our marvellous preferential system gives us the opportunity to express our views in a more subtle way by giving a first preference to a candidate who may reflect our views more, even on a single issue, than the major parties, who are invariably rough camp coalitions of views. This point is rather strongly highlighted by our current member, whose well-known views on asylum seekers is directly contradictory to his leaders. So that if you are in favour of Russell's more humanitarian stand, and vote for him on that basis, the policy you get implemented is the exact opposite. So I think the opportunity to hear and understand the views of the full range of options you have, you have presented to you is very important and I think you all deserve to give yourself a small pat on the back uh, whether you're hearing it here in the flesh or listening via the web or via community radio, particularly given the state of the weather for those here. I also want to express appreciation to those candidates who, while not being able to attend, actually apologised. So, formal apologies from Andrew Chris Rago from the DLP and Benjamin Staggard from the Sex Party. So, let me introduce the candidates present and hope I get them right. Um, fortunately, on the far right, far left, of my, my far left, uh, and the first on my list is Malcolm McElvey. On this side we have Matt Sherry. Perhaps they should wave as they go through. Uh, then we have Gary Patton, uh, John Parker, David Amor, uh, and I was expecting Norman Baker, but he may He's coming from a further distance, so he may not be here. And, as we have also discovered, uh, Anthony. And is Naus the Nous. right connection? The yeah, pronunciation? Indeed. Perhaps more than the MC. So the format of the night is that each candidate will be asked to present an introduction, um, and I would ask if they could make at least, include at least some comment on the get up uh, agenda of, uh, in regard to uh, the question of topics of climate change, social equity, and asylum seekers, and uh, we'll make that three minutes each. Then, as you are aware, we've already started collecting questions from the floor, and we also have questions coming in via Twitter. Uh, and through the night, um, I'll be directing those to uh, the candidates. Uh, then, at the end, uh, candidates will have an opportunity to sum up for a couple of minutes. So we're hoping to wrap it all in a, approximately an hour and a half, so it's not too late at night, 
Uh, but then we will have some tea and coffee available uh, and hopefully if you aren't, don't have to rush off, uh, you can stay and meet the candidates on a more personal level and perhaps uh, continue the discussion afterwards. So with that introduction, um, I'll just ask, as the candidates have uh, lined themselves up randomly, um, we'll just start from this side and ask David if you would come and give your introduction, please. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm the first one up here and I'm also number one on your ticket, so don't forget that on September the 7th. Um, the reason why I'm here is because of Bob Catter. I'm here for the Catter Australia Party. Um, and the reasons for that is, as you can probably all know and understand, um, with 13 candidates at this election is a lot of us are very unhappy and not real tickled pink with what's happening and what's going on in the circus, what we call federal election. Um, Bob Catter, I've been with him for only about four months. I've listened to him three or four times when I've met him. But our party's desire and our party's idea and our core values and strengths is exactly where, where I fit. I was born in Warrigal. I've worked all my life very, very hard on dairy farm as I grew up. I've now got my own business that I've had for 20 years. I live and work in Curranborough. So I've been a Macmillan boy for my whole life. Our most important things is for infrastructure, employment, health, roads. We've all heard about this from all the parties and what are we going to do with it and what can we do with it. Well the most important thing tonight is we've got to realise that we have to work, we have to build what we want. You've probably seen a bit of a slogan that I've put up for the last week, let's build and own, not sell and sack. And that's what's been going on. My business in the last eight years, it's been pretty tough out there, so I know exactly what it's like. And like I said, I'm a worker from the age of about four years old driving a tractor on the farm. My beliefs for the Catter Australia Party is for all of us to get behind and drive on one road for the future for Australia, full stop. And the idea of that is we need infrastructure, we need people working. Because from our jobs and the money that we get, we pay our taxes and that goes across the board for everyone, for the infrastructure, the roads, families and everything else like that. On my policy that I've got over there, you know, the 21 core values for the Catter Australia Party, it's all about for Australia, for Australians. We've got to get rid of free trade. It's unfair to have stuff come into Australia that we don't know where it was born or where it was made or how it was housed and all the rest because we've got to look at our food industries. Our food industries for Australia is very important. We have enough here for their dairy, our beef, potatoes, farmers and everything else like that to physically grow our own food. We don't need imports. We can see all the hassles and dramas and everything that we've got and free trade is the worst thing that we can have so we need to tax the free trade. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you through the night. Good evening, my name is Gary Patton and I'm the Senator Online candidate for the seat of Macmillan. I'd like to welcome everyone here to tonight and thank you for attending. I'd also like to thank GetUp organisers for their invitation to me to be able to speak with you all and provide you with an insight into the new democracy system that is being offered to the Australian people by Senator Online and its candidates. As David said, he's number one on the ticket. We're not going in any particular order, but I'm number two on the ticket. They just need to put a one next to that. <coughs> Um, here we go, deep breath, Gary. <clears throat> Democracy is arguably the most important prize of social progress, but its development in the 21st century is frustrated by continuous campaigning and electioneering. Good government, as required in our constitution, is compromised, and we have lost sight of what democracy was originally designed to achieve. Senator Online offers a model that promotes common ground. We don't need better politicians. We need a better system. I've been asked to address them uh, specific issues uh, by GetUp that are of interest to all Australians. 
I will be brief, or well, as brief as I can be. Refugees and asylum seekers. I believe that there is a difference between the asylum seekers who have been coming by boat and those who would seek true asylum. We have a system to process asylum seekers and that is currently being circumvented by the people smugglers. It must be stopped and it must be stopped at the source, not halfway across the ocean. These people are putting children and adults at risk, which is against Australian law and therefore these actions are reprehensible to the people of Australia. The money being spent on the people smugglers could have been spent better spent on real refugee and asylum seeker issues. Regardless of our personal views, the 1951 UN Convention for Refugees is quite clear on this, and I quote, International law recognises that people at risk of persecution have a legal right to flee their country and seek refuge elsewhere, but does not give them the right to enter a country of which they are not a national, nor do people at risk of per persecution have a right to choose their preferred country of protection. How are we going for time? Good. Another deep breath, Gary. <coughs> okay. Marriage equality. I believe there are two elements to this, to this issue, and they are both being thrown into the same basket. One is the social acceptance of marriage equality, and the other is the equality of all Australians under Australian law. On the latter, Australia is failing the homosexual members of our communities and I believe that this is wrong. Homosexual couples, regardless of what they do in their bedrooms, I sure as hell don't advertise what I do in my bedroom, neither would I hold any cre credence to any question regarding that issue. They deserve equality under Australian law in the same way as any other Australian couple. This is going to be political. As they say, love is love and who am I? Or who are you to question what love is? Australian law needs to change now and need to change now in regards to this issue. The word marriage, I believe, has been a stumbling, barrier, or stumbling block and barrier to this issue. Let's get the system and the laws right in relation to communal property and spousal rights, etc., and work out what we're going to call it later. Coal seam gas mining. And I'm getting the wind up. <laughs> There's one, this one is quick and easy. No and no now. The examples of what is happening in the US and what is currently happening in Australia is unacceptable. Well, I think I'm actually now out of time, so thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, with Palmer United, we're on pretty much the same page as the Cato Party, so our views are very similar in a lot of, a lot of the areas, but unfortunately, Bob and Clive, buttheads. So, um, where is the people? This phrase is not just a phrase. This is what's on the wall of our Palmer United headquarters. Palmer United is all about giving people of this country a real choice, a third major party for you to choose from. With men and women in 150 seats all over Australia standing up to bring democracy back to the people. There are a lot of issues affecting families and small businesses across the electorate of Macmillan, from climate change, unemployment, the economy, all the way across to the asylum, the asylum seekers. At Palmer United, we have been working hard on common sense solutions for these issues. What Palmer United has done that other parties haven't is that we've got a broad range of real life experiences. We have teachers and educators working on the education policies. We have small business owners working on real solutions to help the mum and dad businesses across the area. Defence personnel that have first-hand experience looking into the eyes of the asylum seekers that they're being plucked out of the waters around Christmas Island. These people are working on the issue with the boats. The economy has been a big issue over the years. The current government and the opposition have only one solution. Raise taxes. More taxes. Increase taxes. Let's cut spending. Palmer United have a better idea. Let's reduce taxes. This will give more money to the struggling families so their quality of living will rise. They will spend this money in small businesses in the small towns in which they live. This will encourage growth. As they grow, more jobs are created. And with more jobs created, more locals employed. How will this be paid for, I hear you ask? Well, it's simple. Every time the dollar goes round, the GST is paid on it. So the more money in circulation, the more revenue is created. More profits in business equals more revenue. More people working, more revenue. 
So by reducing taxes paid by hard working Australians, it will allow families and it will allow the country to prosper. And we can get back to the real issues like protecting, protecting Australia and the climate and protecting it all throughout future generations. It is time for new ideas, common sense and most importantly giving the country back to the people. If you are not happy with the current conditions in this country, it's time for a new, fresh approach and with common sense solutions. And in saying that, I think the three of us have already stated that. It's got to go back to the people. We need a change. Thanks. Hello, everyone, and I welcome you here, and thank you for listening to us as, as uh, one of the politicians uh, for the seat of McMillan. I'm very happy to represent the Labor Party here in Warrigal and for the seat. Um, obviously I'm a young person and quite younger than the average you know, candidate on the ticket. And the reason why I ran for the Labor Party is that we represent future issues, future policies. And we were asked to talk about two topics for Get Up, or which they were related to. And climate change is a huge issue, which is why I've gone into politics in general. Is it a huge issue for the country and the world to, to fix, to combat and to resolve? And we have to take big steps, immediate steps, and I believe the Labor Party has taken the first steps in this journey by introducing carbon tax and into next year, hopefully, an ETS. And it really worries me that this coming election is a choice on this issue as well. It has been drowned out by other issues. Other issues are important as well. But this climate change, we really have a huge divide on both sides of it. Um, both parties. We want to put in ETS to combat climate change, to transition to a clean energy future, we'll bring industry and business with us, and we'll bring future jobs, future prosperity for the country. And you've got the other side of the equation, which go goes against uh, an ETS. But in previous um, Howard government in 2007, they said they, they want to put, uh, introduce one. And it's just completely gone back on that promise like the rest of them. In 2009, Tony Abbott said on 7.30 report that it was the most efficient, effective and best way to combat climate change. And now it says it's absolute crap. So, and they want to put into a, a um, green army. Yes, that's good, cool, but it's not really going to go to the heart of the issue by transitioning our economy to a green energy future. So that's that one issue. Um, second issue I, t I chose to was um, marriage equality. And it's very um, controversial in some circles, but for, as a young person in our, my circles, it's not at all. It's just, it's time, like John um, Kevin Hart said. Um, I respect the uh, religious institutions, though, like the Labour Party does, do not, you know, um, perform same-sex marriages in churches. As a Christian, I um, respect their view for doing so, but. As a democracy, as a lab candidate, as a free society, we have to not have other people's rights be trampled on by another's. And let everyone have the same equality. Equality isn't equality with two, two sets of people having different rights. So, that's, um, so back to the start, I guess. Being a young person, I look to the future. Labour Party for me represents the future including such things like the Gonski education reforms, national broadband, the infrastructure of tomorrow. So I hope you all vote Labor and vote for me for the city of McMillan and I would love to represent you all in the federal parliament. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm John Parker. I'm, uh, running as an independent. The reason why I'm running is because, to a certain degree, um, your opening comments was right. Uh, by and large, the Gippsland region has been ignored uh, at this point in time. Uh, you'll find that money has been spent more in the Geelongs, the Hunter Valleys, those marginal seats. They, neither party really sees this as a marginal seat and they aren't spending the time or the money in this region. Um, I've been um, 
blown about the, the issues around um, for the last 10 years in this region. Probably um, all up, I've been uh, an activist, a political activist through the union movement since the 70s uh, in various forms. Um, but I'll just touch on the, the few issues that, that, you, uh, that you've, I've been asked to comment on. So I'll do the, the easy bits first. And when I talk about uh, marriage equality, um, I, I've been wrong about that. I was wrong in the 60s because I thought by the 70s it would be finished with. Uh, by the 70s I thought by the 80s it would be finished with and by the 80s I thought it would be finished with and we still yet debating that issue. I can't understand why we were debating that issue. It's, it's, um, it's not an issue as far as um, I'm concerned. It should, it's an issue that ha the democracy hasn't taken its place. People haven't got those rights and they should have those rights. They should be, it, it shouldn't be an issue today. It should, uh, marriage equality should have been done in the 80s. It should have been done in the 70s. So as far as I'm concerned, I'd be advocating on marriage equality. I, I think it's disgusting that it hasn't been done and I think it should be done. Asylum seekers, again, we have, we are, People keep on talking about people smugglers. If Moses was probably a people smuggler, if the truth was known, and certainly a lot of Jews would have been would have been um, uh, in, in concentration camps if it hadn't been people smugglers. That's not the issue. The issue is that people flee because they're under persecution, and people should be looking at trying to help those people. People um, talk about the crocodile tears about people drowning. Yet they they don't care whether they're going to send the boats back or they send them to some concentration camp on, on some remote island. It's just disgusting. So I, I think that the refugee issue should be fixed. People should be uh, going out and meeting the boats when before they hit Indonesia or Malaya and setting up um, uh, um, places where people can be processed out, out like we did with the Vietnamese. But that that should not be an issue either. That should be, but it's been played as a political issue. Um, the other two issues oh, I'm very passionate about in that climate change for the Gippsland region is not just about climate change. Uh, it's, a, it's a transition. We have to do a huge transition uh, in the Gippsland region. Not, and there's two areas that, that transition is going to take place. One is in the technology that's coming at us at a million miles an hour and the, and the climate change as well. If you look at um, the, the dairy industries, the farming industry, food belt industries, uh, they're under huge pressure because of the free trade and the un uncompetitive nature of, of large corporations levering those, those farmers. And the other area is we're, we're about to meet peak timber. So the timber industry is also at risk and so is the, so is the, um, um, the, the mining industries and the power industries. And all those technologies need to be re looked at. And, and uh, if anybody wants to ask me anything about uh, the health issue, I've got a comment about that too. So, thank you very much. Um, I'm Malcolm McKelvey, I'm standing for the Greens, and I want to first acknowledge that we are um, standing on um, Aboriginal land, the Gunai Kunai people, um, and part of um, what we ought to be doing as a country is um, recognising that there were actually people here. It wasn't terra nullius. Um, I'm standing because I'm passionate about people and the environment. We're facing um, temperature rises of two degrees or more if we just keep going with business as, as usual and that's going to be absolutely disastrous. We need to have 100% renewable energy as soon as possible. I think that we ought to be grasping the opportunity that that um, presents to Australia. We, um, we should be uh, leading the world by advancing renewable technology. 
we've got the knowledge and the technology to solve the problem, but we lack the political will. Unfortunately, we've got the choice between Abbott, who doesn't believe climate change is a threat. He's leading a party which a majority um, don't believe it's a threat either. And on the other side, we've got Kevin Rudd, who lacks the courage to continue the, the course set by Labor and the Greens of the clean energy package. The last 30 years or, or more has seen the gap between rich and poor widen. I believe that the economy should be working for the people, not people for the economy. When I talk to single mothers who, um, single mothers are having discussions uh, that go something like, they'll, they'll take any partner, they're looking for anyone just to get a sense of financial security. I've talked to um, people who are unemployed trying to um, sustain their family, they're surviving with food handouts. And I think when, I, when we're seeing that kind of um, level of distress, and on the other hand we've got Gina Reinhart thinking that Australians ought to be working for $2 an hour to be more competitive, I think we've got good evidence that the economy is not working for the greater good. Tax cuts for business and for individuals over, the, over time has, have favoured the wealthy. Um, and at the expense of those people more vulnerable. The Greens are not suggesting that everyone ought to be paid the same, far from it, but we just think that um, there should be a fairer share for everybody. There is really good evidence that um, societies where there's a, 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 um, a great level of um, distance between those earning the highest and those earning the lowest have poor social and health outcomes for everybody, not just the people who are on the, on the lower socioeconomic scale. So access to high quality healthcare and education services for everyone is a key measure to ensure that that gap narrows and, and we're fully committed to, to, um, to that access. On asylum seekers, they, they are just that, they're seeking asylum. They're people like you and I who are fleeing persecution and death and we've got a moral and, and legal obligation to help them. Abbott and Rudd have embarked on a race to see who can appear the toughest just to win votes. And um, you can see they're just placing their own interests ahead of doing what is legally and morally right. For generations our society has discriminated against people whose sexual orientation varies from being purely heterosexual. Changing the Mar Marriage Act is a very simple yet important symbolic change. It's not a passing fad and the Greens are the only party that are fully supporting it. Maintaining, I believe that maintaining that discrimination based on just tradition, we've always done it so it must be good to keep going, um, is not a valid reason to continue that discrimination. Many other injustices supported by religious texts have long ago been um, judged inappropriate for modern society and marriage equality's time has now come. Thanks. Thanks. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, you've come out on a, a good night. My political party is Rise Up Australia Party. I guess I'm the new kid on the block, although they tell me I'm the oldest candidate. I'm married with one wife, have four grown up children, 12 grandchildren. I've lived in that villain electorate for most of my 73 years. I was a teacher at the Royal Tech for 22 years. My profile and the 26 policies that we have already out can be found on www.riseupaustraliaparty.com. At no time in my life did I ever plan to be a politician. However, over the last two decades I've become increasingly disturbed with the events taking place in Canberra. My love for this country and you, my fellow countrymen and women, motivates me to become more involved with the leadership of our great nation. This new and patriotic Rise Up Australia party is dedicated to keep Australia Australian. The freedom and great lifestyle we enjoy as Australians is the envy of the world, but it is under constant threat, and you better believe it. Asylum seekers and others from around the world are heading here in large numbers. Former Prime Minister John Howard showed us how to handle the boat problem. Why aren't we doing it? 
Our heads must rule over our misplaced emotions. Letting in the boats is not the answer. On marriage equality, it's, it's quite, un, a, quite a misunderstood topic these days. Our wise constitution speaks of one man, one wife, their children and any adoptions. This is Australian law and this is family. We need a multi-ethnic Australia, not a multicultural Australia which creates enclaves. Climate change has always been with us. Even Blyde Freddie can see that. Have you heard of the Ice Age? Yes, the climate keeps changing. A university lecturer told me one day when he came up here to Ogle that the average world temperature was higher during the Roman times than it is now. We know that the human element is not really having a great effect, as some would have us believe. So why the big carbon tax? We in Rise Up Australia Party love all Aussies and we want the best for them. We will do all in our power to improve the health system of our nation and being a fledgling party, we are working on it full time. So I thank you for your attention and I hope you remember that Rise Up Australia Party is available for vote number one. Thank you. <laughs> Norman, if you stay there Norman, okay. um, just for the listeners, uh, that was Norman Baker by the way. Um, so uh, our first question will be from uh, Peter of Warrigal uh, and some of the candidates have already answered this so I'll just direct this to the candidates who haven't specifically talked about this. What's your policy on foreign ownership of Australian businesses? We are very clear on that one. We can't be selling our country like we're doing. We're going to find that if we do that we're going to be uh, renting off other people our own farms. So we are definitely at least 51% Australian owned. Okay. Um, uh, if you take your seat again, Norman. Uh, Malcolm, would you? The Greens um, feel that we... Uh, that the, um, I'm just speaking about the, the um, um, ownership of agricultural land here rather than business. But we, we've got a policy that we at least need to um, know who owns agricultural land. We, um, mainstream parties are not thinking about food security. In fact, I heard someone, um, I think on a Q&A, something scoff, laugh at, at someone who, who brought up food security, but it's, it's a real issue. We're going to be facing water shortage, um, arable land shortage worldwide, and um, in Australia we do need to protect um, our, our ability to grow food and we need to know who, who owns the land and where the produce is going to go. I think my, my understanding is that the Greens are the only ones um, talking about that. I don't think we've got a strong position about ownership of business per se. Joel? Uh, certainly as when it comes to not just farms but all, all businesses um, there is, we should be very careful about uh, allowing uh, multinationals from all around the world taking over um, parts of our industries and, and I certainly think that um, uh, the fact that we've got most of our mines have been mined by overseas apart from a few uh, large, larger uh, corporations which here but they are, most of them are, are overseas and most of our wealth is going overseas and I think we need to look at that uh, and we need to regulate some of it definitely. This is quite simple and easy. Um, Australia is one of very few countries that will actually sell its land to someone overseas. We must stop it like I said at the start, we've got to build and own our own country and uh, we are very, very passionate that this has to stop and must stop or otherwise all they're doing for Australia is buying our land and sending the food they make here back to their countries where it's real cheap.
Thank you. Yeah, this is pretty uh, important, this topic. Um, I like Australian food, I'm sure that most people here do too. An article I was reading the other day says that within the next 10 years we won't be able to feed our, our population from food grown here. One thing that Clive did say to me in one of our meetings was if Australia unfortunately went to war, we are not self-sufficient. We would have to rely on the rest of the world to supply food for our troops. Now that scares me and it scares, scares me for my children and my grandchildren. I don't have any yet. It scared me for them. <laughs> okay, so the, one of our policies we've got is um, food labelling. One of the big policies, you know, 95% of the food and the packaging made in Australia will be labelled so that you as a consumer know exactly where that product comes from. You know, that makes sense. Uh, that's all. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony? Um, for this issue, we shouldn't jump to any conclusion or jump to any real tough stance. We can't harbour an attitude of xenophobia, the fear of the unknown out there. Uh, Australia has always welcomed investment from foreign ownership. We should always have regulations in place to monitor that and keep watch of that. We can't let foreign ownership have a monopoly in Australia, obviously. So, the government has put in regulations and will continue to put regulations and have oversight over foreign ownership. So, yeah. um, Anthony, while you're there, um, obviously this question of land uh, mm. has been raised specifically. Um, and the suggestion has been made that the uh, amount that triggers the Foreign Investment Review Board should be lowered. Do you have yeah. a comment? Um, like I said, I think there should be more insight and regulation to it. Myself, I think it could be too low. I think it needs review, personally. Um, but we are always looking for new ways we can um, better regulate industries. So, yeah. Um, so Peter would like a, a follow-up uh, answer to those of you who have expressly opposed foreign ownership. What then are your comments on the French ownership of our local Jindy cheese uh, and the New Zealand uh, ownership of uh, Fonterra? Both large local companies, both foreign owned. Who would like to take that first? John? Well, again, um, the regulation should take place and uh, if, if people uh, want to know about the Fonterra, Fonterra was the result of a co cooperative here in, in, uh, at Darnham, uh, who then was floated on the stock market and within 30 seconds of it being floated it was, it was taken over by Fonterra. Uh, so I think that we need to look at protecting a number of our, our companies around the place. I don't think you, you should stop total investment, but you should have a, a tight regulations on what happens and, and we should be very aware of uh, social enterprises and cooperatives and businesses which are owned by the, the, the community being floated around on stock markets and then suddenly disappearing. And we've, uh, during the Howard years, we saw just about everything that wasn't what, what was was bolted down, unbolted and sold off. Um, so uh, one of the problems is now we're paying for that. We're paying for it in the MBM when companies are being floated off and sold off because we're having to roll it out under the taxpayers. We're going to wind up doing that in the food industry if we're not careful by, by not regulating them. The wheat board is an, a typical example of what's happening where a wheat board was, was uh, put on the stock market. Suddenly now foreign owners are wanting to buy it, buy it off and it should be stopped and it should be controlled so that uh, those boards which are regulating bodies and, and key uh, instruments in the, uh, in the um, export and import and control on the industries should be controlled much better. Yes. Gary Patton, Senator Online. Just wondering, Paul, perhaps um, I know people can, in the room here can see me. Perhaps when the candidates come up, perhaps if they reintroduce themselves so the listeners on the radio. Um, very, very good point. Thank so you. Otherwise, the voices are not going to know who's speaking. Um, who asked that question, Paul? The, is it Peter? Uh, Peter. 
Peter, um, I believe that uh, the sovereignty of Australia is, is critical. Uh, we need to maintain control over our own country, over our own land, and have Australian ownership. Uh, in terms of, as David pointed out there before, Australia is one of the few countries in the world where you can actually purchase land as a, as a, a non-national of that country. Uh, example, in, uh, in Thailand, uh, an Australian can't own land in Thailand. It can only be owned by a, a Thai national, uh, but that land can be built upon uh, by a non-national, and they can they can uh, you know basically take a, a lease on that land 99 year lease and that's what I propose in terms of for any any foreign investment in Australia that the uh, land uh, is retained by Australian owners and it's actually leased out to them under under a leasing agreement. Thank you. David, you were fairly strong on that point. Oh, sorry, Norman. I can't say I know a whole lot about these companies but I believe you don't sell the, the family farm. And uh, it's hard uh, for a man my age to believe that some of the th these things that are going on in Australia are going on. But if we don't hold on to what we've got, overseas will take it over and they'll take our whole nation over. So it's quite clear to me that we need at least the 51%. We need to hang on to what we've got in a, in a very tight, hard market and people are not real keen to uh, let you have what they've got so I don't see why we should be selling off what we've got so if I agree with these gentlemen we need to hold on to what we've got in Australia no to comment on that I'd move on to the next question which is from uh, Libby uh, it's our first uh, Twitter question by the way um, will you stop any more poker machine licences being issued to clubs to protect the retailers who are suffering in this area? Excuse me, I'm here. Sorry, what? Okay. Is the microphone on? The, the question is in relation to poker machine licences in this area. Yeah. The microphones are only for the radio, they're not for the hall. So that's all right, we'll fix it next time. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, with regards to this one, um, it's good to see technology working. I don't know how you use Twitter. But uh, yeah, with regards to poker machines, I think we need to, to have a full investigation into that. Um, I don't, I'm not going to stand here and say, yes, I'll put a, a ban on any more licences or yes, I will issue more licences. It's more about finding out what is actually out there and what it's doing to communities. Small communities suffer from it, and I know that from the small communities I live in. Um, but I do believe that we need to investigate that one further. So thank you for the question. Does anybody else wish to take up the question of poker machines? Can you say that again? I'll say it again after. Um, it's Malcolm McKelly for the Greens. Um, I think the um, pokies is just an extraordinarily bad issue, um, a bad thing for our um, community and uh, stopping more uh, pokies licences is a great idea. I think even more important though is minimising the losses that people make and so you can have um, you know, one machine with $100 bets doing a lot more damage than you know, 20 machines with a $1 Bet. So the um, proposal to have a, a, a $1 maximum um, bet each time is, is um, easy to implement and just again lacks political will. Any of you other gentlemen want to take up the issue of poker machines? Again at my age I have seen a lot of people go and real bad after gambling. So I wouldn't be for gambling, I'd be decreasing it and I'd be taking away quite a few of the poker machines because it's not doing our community any good. And I, w I looked into it quite a few years ago and the uh, money that comes into the government through poker machines is only about a quarter what it costs us for the people that gamble and get, in get themselves into trouble. So to me it's not a good way to go. 
Anybody else like to take up the issue of poker machines? Anthony? Um, I understand the Labor Party has, to my knowledge, have any uh, new policies on poker machines per se. But um, last months of uh, the previous term of government, um, we did crack down on sports betting and sport advertising. And it's a good um, segue into a broader debate about gambling in general. Um, on cyberspace or the internet and that's new if I was elected a new pathway that I would advocate entire regulation on the on uh, sports betting and other types of betting like that so. uh, thank you for that last comment uh, Anthony uh, the questioner also was wanting a follow-up on online gambling specifically would anyone like to take up the issue of online gambling John yeah, John Parker, um, on both the, both the issues, the online gambling and the pokies, it really needs to be tightly regulated. Um, governments have become dependent on, on the gambling dollars and certainly we saw the obscene uh, online betting which was taking place um, during football and other types of they probably even would run online gambling for the, um, the federal election if it was if they hadn't slowed it down a little bit. Um, so I, I think that it just needs to be controlled. It needs to be regulated. Um, and I, I, I would like to see them go. I never, I, I, I find them obscene myself. But um, certainly, it needs to be wound back and it needs to be uh, deliberately wound back so that uh, uh, the, the obviously there's clubs and that's dependent on them but they need to be wound back and look and help uh, find other ways of finding revenue rather than the pokies a and the online gambling as well should be just outlawed. Last call for comments on Good evening again, David from the um, Cat Australia Party. Uh, we're totally against the gambling, especially online and when you can ring up and do it. It's totally um, not fair. The most important thing is when pokies first came into Victoria, you've got to realise is there was X amount of dollars going back to the communities. You would see you know, that the football grounds, the soccer grounds, the tennis clubs and everything else like that. Over the last five to six years it's totally dried up. And the reason for that is for our governments. You know, they're getting the money and not the communities. So yes, it has to be wound back and wound back a, log, a long way. There has been some machines taken out of pubs, if, it, if you go in there and have a bit of a look. But they certainly got to be cut down to the 10 cent and 5 cent machines. The dollar or 10 dollar machines definitely have to go and they can go back to where they belong in Melbourne. So for the country areas, we are totally against it because we just can't afford it. We can see what happens and what's going on and I can see it in Canberra itself. People will spend their wages and then go to the churches for charity and for food. That's not correct and that's not the Australian way. Thank you. Um, this question is from Andrea and it's uh, phrased fairly generally so you probably have a fair area to move with it. Um, how should public schools be funded compared to private schools? I guess it's uh, looking to the balance between public, private Commonwealth and state funding. Um, who would like to take that one first? Well, having been a school teacher for 22 years, my approach is that we want to do the best for the students. And whatever's the best for the students, whether they're in a government school or a private school, that's the way we want to go. We want to see those students get the best. But uh, where's the money going to come from is basically the direction of the question, I guess. Well, I understand you're talking about government money. Well, it's going to come from the government. So when we're in government, we're going to have say about it. And uh, we, it's not so much to me about whether it's a, a state-run thing or a private-run one or a church-run one. It's about the students that are in the school. And we want to have our Australian students get the very best. So we will be go, uh, putting the money into where it's going to do the individual student the best we can do for them. Um, Anthony, I think you were moving also. Um, 
school funding, especially the Gonski reforms that the government uh, introduced, was a huge factor in why I wanted to run, considering at the time the opposition was against uh, the funding, saying it was a con. Um, it's exactly what the Rise Up, Rise Up candidate uh, says. It's a needs, needs, needs-based mechanism. So it's based on, on each pupil, not what uh, school they go to, private or public, or what area code they live in, or if they live in the study, uh, if they come from a, um, a poor background, or they have a disability, they all have the equal playing field, but they have an equal amount of money towards them, and then they have loadings on each. That's what the Gonski reforms is. So for a primary school kid, the government is giving nine, $9,000, and then for a high school uh, kid, it's twelve. And then there's six base learnings on that, if you don't, didn't know that. So it's disability, uh, background, area code. So a rural community like ours would get more money. Um, so we have overhauled the entire education system to make it fairer, to make it better for federal and state governments, and especially for the kids, because that's they get the support they need, no matter what, just, um, uh, in that it unables them to um, reach their potential. So the Labor government fully supported it, fully funded it, and we hope to deliver it as a government in the next term. Uh, Gary Pattinson, you're online again. Um, I think in terms of the funding, it's not so much where the funding comes from, it's where it goes to. And I think there's a massive imbalance in terms of metropolitan schools versus country schools and the, and the education opportunities that the country, country kids get. I think we need to n- not just look at where the funding comes from, but look at the, uh, make it more e- equitable for the kids of country schools so that we get a, a, fair, uh, a fair shake of the, uh, the money tin from the government. Um, in terms of, as the other candidates have mentioned, absolutely. The kids are number one, uh, and they haven't been number one for many years. They've been caught up in the political arguing and to and fro and all this, you know, campaigning, electioneering. Um, let's let's get back to what Senator Ryan wants, and that's back to the people of Australia. In our cover-up, I'll uh, I'll give you a bit more of an over- overview of, of Senator Ryan, but let's get back to the kids and let's find out where that funding's going. Thank you. Yeah, with school funding, uh, I agree with most of the others that it should be even across the board. I think more of the problem is that the system, the system's all wrong. You know, we've got kids that move from Victoria to New South Wales and all of a sudden they're six months behind. Or they move to Western Australia and they're two years in front. This is wrong. The other thing is that we've gone away from technical schools. You know, so we're losing all our trades. That's why we're going to get these 457 visas in. You know, I'm a motor mechanic. Right? I'm no good at paperwork. I'll never run my own business. Right? I don't know about trigonometry and all those things. My 16-year-old daughter comes home and says, Dad, can you help? Right? But I know how to fix a car. There's kids out there that are failing, the system's failing them. They're working away from school. I've got a certificate that says I have a VCE, but they've got no future. They don't understand what's next. Okay, so I think it's more of the system. Let's, you know, we can throw as much money as we want into the school system, it's not going to fix it unless the system changes. So all kids should get the same funding, but the system needs to change. Go again for the Greens. Um, so th- as I said before, the Greens' position is that um, all Australian children should have access to high quality education. Um, the, so we fully support the Gonski reforms, the needs based funding. Um, <coughs> And public funding going into private schools is fine, but those um, private schools need to um, be accountable. They need to open their books and um, the um, government funds... Um, you know, we need to know that those, um, the funds are needed in those private schools. So that's one point. Another one is that if um, schools want to uh, receive public funding, they um, ought not to be able to discriminate based on... Um, Religion. Um, well, I'd prefer to give that next person an opportunity to. David Amos from the Counterparty. I totally agree with these gentlemen here and some over here. 
uh, we all agree to disagree on it. But um, our massive problem is we've got X amount of dollars that gets spent from the federal government down to the states and everything else like that. And um, I was a school teacher for six years as well and also ran my motor mechanic shop, which I still have and st still continue on with. The interesting thing is we really suffer. We get through the primary school, we go to the secondary school, and we haven't got any tech schools. And that's where I worked out. I wanted to you know, do welding and motor mechanic and do all those things, put the hands on, because the high school was for all the fess heads that wanted to go on the computers and do all the rest. That, that's how it was many years ago. The problem is now the government is spending that much money on trade areas, you know, a TAFE course here, a TAFE course there. And Wayne Gaffer, I spent four and a half million dollars on a brand new building for hairdressing courses and things like that, okay, which we, we all need, especially, you know, the, the women would like. That's closed now, so they've got to go to either Churchill or to Dandenong. And every time you have a look and we think of Macmillan at Lane Gatter or Macmillan at Warrigal for the farm apprentices or things like that, that course goes for three or four years and then it falls over. And then all of a sudden our kids have got nowhere locally. And that's our most important thing is. We've got to have the money and the correct teachers to look after our kids in the community of the farming area. We don't want our kids to go to Melbourne and try and work these things out and you know, try and get backwards and forwards from schooling. It's just about impossible. And let's face it, transport's not real good either. But our main thing is we've got to spend the money wisely and correctly for our schools and for our education for our kids to either be a mechanic or anything like that or a turner and fitter to physically be able to do it in their own area. And that's our biggest problem. Both parties are spending money, it's looking real good, it's for votes and everything else like that. Two or three years' time, the thing's dead. Too much closing of everything for the local kids and communities for the country people. Last call, any comments? John? Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, by and large, my, my position is very similar to the Greens, um, but I will just expand on a couple of things. Um, when it comes to the tertiary education, the, the issues of apprentices, which is that I'm very passionate about, 49% of our apprentices drop out before they finish their time, and 51% of trainees drop out before they finish their time. And that means that we miss by half uh, the, the way that we train our young people. And it's very easy to blame, and that's what happens. They blame the young people for not being job ready, but people within the workplaces aren't training people to be job ready. They're, not, they're expecting them to walk through the door to be job ready. So we need to have a look at a new system of, of the way that tertiary education, and when people go on from, from out of the school system into the, into the work, the training in the workplace is a different way. And, it needs to be much more beef teak. The amount of, uh, because of the way that technology is going, there isn't, in country regions, it's, it's much more difficult. You don't need 20 mechanics in a region, whereas you used to. There is a lot of differences in, in the way that things are done. And we need to look at that, and we're trying to do that. We've been uh, working on that for the last five or six years on tr trying to uh, uh, do something about the dropout rate, and that's that, so. That's a major area that we need to look at where the, the spending is wrong, and of course the TAFE stuff. Unfortunately, you've got a federal government which will bring out the Gonski um, reforms, and then you've got a state government which axed just about everything that wasn't bolted down in the TAFE system. So that's a that's a major problem that we have in Australia, where we've got two systems running. Uh, on education. While you're there, John, um, with, uh, apologies if I'm uh, misguessing your age, but um, when you were an apprentice, um, I, I think you probably were with the SEC. At those times, the SEC was a large training organisation. That's not that kind of situation doesn't. Yeah, occur you're, not, you're not guessing your age wrong. You're probably guessing where I got trained, but um, I, I'm a carpenter by trade. Um, but uh, you're right, it, the, the government used to train 
the SEC, I think it had about uh, 600, 700 apprentices just in, in Gippsland. Uh, Telstra used to have them. Just about every, um, every uh, local government, every government instrumentality, border works, all had apprentices. Now we don't, we don't put apprentices on and the major companies do not employ apprentices. John Holland, we had to save an apprentice from being sacked at, with John Holland. Um, that was the first apprentice and it was a supervisor's son. That was the first apprentice they had in 10 years. Kane Construction has an ad apprentices, civil and civic. What they do is the, the big end of town, the mining and the construction and all the SEC, the power stations, all that steal off the small, small businesses. So if they want to make a mechanic or a mechanic to, for the mines, they just go and offer um, $40, $40 an hour and the guy from Carrumburra will go and work at the, the mines. And the guy in Carrumburra can't pay $70, $80 an hour on costs for a mechanic in Carrumburra. So that's they're some of the issues and I can talk all night if you like on that one. Uh, between when I left school and when I went in as, as a teacher, I was a fully qualified senior technician with Telecom Australia building telephone exchanges. To get into the technical division as a teacher I had to have at least five years training and five years on the job. Now I had seven years training, I was a senior technician and I had to have at least five years training on the job to get in as a teacher. Now for a start our teachers we've got to have a look at them. Just have a look at the way they dress and the way they speak to the children and the way they get around. He's a totally different person than you see standing here. This is your old teacher, the old guy, you know, who, who wants to smack your hand if you're naughty, which they don't want me to do today. Now, the technical system we had in Victoria when I was teaching in it, and it wasn't because I was teaching in it, it was because um, Doug Mills and a couple of his mates set it up. It was an excellent system, and I can remember they were sending people over from Germany and England and other countries to see what we were doing here in Victoria because we had the top thing going in Victoria. And they let it fall apart. Not only that, the students loved it. Now, you know, I don't see a lot of happy students because a lot of things have happened and the discipline's not there like it used to be. So our schools need a big shake up then. Like, like this fellow said, we need to have a good look at our school. We're bringing up children like they say they've got their VCE but they don't know much. They don't, they don't know how to live. And they, they're coming out, we, look, we could teach them to be mathematicians and if you don't teach them how to live, they go out and cut their throat or hang themselves. You need teachers who have got a bit of moral backbone and set an example to the children. And that's what our Rise Up Australia Party is about. Getting this country back on its feet. I mean morally and, and in other ways. And getting it back like it was in the 50s, 60s, like I can remember. Because we had a country in those days. And we were looked up to by other countries. And I could see Johnny Howard trying to do that, but then they voted him out. Um, are there any other comments? I've something about tax. tax. Um, the Labor government has been trying for the last six years to get back to where we were with TAFE and uh, vocational education. They're trying to rebuild the system because the Conservative governments were ripping them down, especially under John Howard. Uh, and now we have us, the federal system, trying to put money into the system and then you have the state Conservative government ripping it out. So we need a bypass and agreement on both sides of the fence say we need to put money into the system, we need to keep putting money in the system and have guarantee for the students, that yes, your course is going to be there in three years or well, how long it is. So I'm saying the Labor's putting the money in, the Conservatives taking it out, we need continuity, we need consistency in this area and we're trying to do it but with Tony Abbott we probably won't have much funding left to do it. Just quickly. David Lamer on Cattle Party again. Look, it's absolutely fantastic the government realises they were pulling things apart. 20 years ago, 80% of Australia was manufacturing. 
That's how big we were 20 years ago. Now it is 20% of manufacturing in Australia. You know, we've got to realise, and that's the reason why that most of us are here as independents and, and for different parties other than the two, is we've had two parties that's totally destroyed us in the last 20 years and we've got to rebuild and continue on. And the only way we're going to do that is massive change. And it's good they start to realise that we need manufacturing in Australia and not all the money all of a sudden. It's got to be done correctly and not overnight. I'd like to move on to a more uh, locally directed question from Bruce um, and it's in regard to the proposed new hospital between Warrigal and Druin. Um, to summarise his question, basically, would you lobby for the allocation of federal funding for this new hospital? Um, and if so, uh, what kind of proportion would you believe should be forced, sourced from federal funding? Um, Who would like to start this off? Um, Malcolm? Um, as a local health practitioner, and um, uh, I was involved in a discussion today uh, with clinical staff about this new local hospital, and um, I can tell you that the, uh, with the population growth in this area, it's, the hospital is starting to struggle, especially with the obstetric services, and um, it's a problem of um, Staffing as well as the physical, low, the, you know, the physical environment, and uh, we will need another, uh, a bigger, better hospital in the area, and um, and I'd fully support uh, pushing for that funding. As to the question of whether, uh, you know, what proportion needs to be federal and state, um, we are, at the moment I'm not in a position to um, to really comment on that that side of the question. Other comments? I'll have a go at this one. Um, no, I'm just about this list. <laughs> no worries. I support the hospital. You know, if, if, especially in Druin, the Druin area, that's expanding fairly rapidly. It's not a country town anymore. It's, a, it's becoming a very large town. So we do need more hospitals, more health services. Uh, Palmer United, we've pledged $18 billion to the health system in Victoria. Okay. Now the, the little thing that we've added to that is that we're going to bypass the state governments because all our money that the federal governments give to the state governments for hospitals, a lot of it's siphoned off for other projects. Okay. We're Palmer United, we want to go direct to the source. It's the hospitals and it's the people that work in the hospitals know what the hospitals need. It's not a minister that sits in, in Melbourne that wouldn't even know where Durham was on a map. He's the one that's making the decisions. So I fully support the hospital. Um, I'm not sure on the amount of funding because I'm not privy to the, uh, the actual cost of the building but a fair chunk of it needs to come from the federal government for the project. Thanks. Yeah, it always amazes me that um, and I, I, I support the, the building of a new hospital in Warrigal. It's, it's, it's uh, the great factor is that it will need one and the old hospital uh, hospitals are only good for about 40 years and they need to be renewed that's the rough thing as theme of it schools roads and hospitals are the responsibility of the state and when the state plays games by having money put in by the federal government and then they pull out money of other areas by the by the, um, the state government, it leaves a sour taste, especially if other places are, are uh, being pulled out. And we've we've seen this up over and over again, where the state government puts in or puts a part of a, a money in, and and they say, then they stand back and start squawking at the the federal government to put their side in. The, the the hospital is the responsibility of the state government. That doesn't mean to say that the federal government shouldn't be looking at overall on how how hospitals are being done and and what sort of hospitals should be done. Certainly, the innovations of new hospitals should be looked at in the way that they're built and and should be funded. But again, it's the state government that needs to put their hand up first. They promised and promised and promised that they would do it. 
the federal government. I've got no doubt if 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 there was a, a, a proposal put on the table that they would get federal government funding for it, whichever party it is. But uh, and it's usually about a quarter, somewhere in that vicinity. Often they can they can lever a quarter of the building cost out of the, but if they're genuine. Just quickly, Anthony, we'll stay at that. Yeah, sorry. Um, the fact of the matter is we're not a marginal election, uh, electorate. We're not narrow enough. We need to make it more narrow. Or to have a Labor candidate in place. This is myself. The fact of the matter is Labor's investing in health. We're investing $20, $20 billion to 2020. We've, we've um, doubled health funding. But we're not seeing it come here. Because we have a Conservative member and we're not marginal enough. So we need to have one vote to make it more marginal or have the party that actually is putting money into the system, like the Labor government, elected in this area. Quickly. Putting more money into things is not always the answer. Of course, we need hospitals. And as the, the, the health is going in, a, in the Australian community, we're going to need more and more hospitals. So Rise Up Australia Party has two-pronged approach. And the big major one is that we improve the health of the general people walking down the street. Now, that when I speak to doctors and things, they first of all say, what's your weight? And as soon as you get to a certain weight, you're going to have pro blood problems. And they, they tell me this, you know, this is what you do, so keep your weight down. I see Australians, they are not living a sensible life. I mean, they drink a lot of alcohol, don't they? They smoke a lot of cigarettes and then they wonder why they, when they get to my age, they can't catch me. They can't catch me. No, they can't. And what they say to me, how can you run at your age? Well, I was a long distance runner, but I run at my age because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble, and I don't go out with bad women. How's that? So you can tell my wife that one. So our approach is that we are going to try to get the Australians to see that if you're going to live a life like that, of course you're going to finish up in hospital. And you want the government to look after you when you've got a fellow next door who lives like me. Right? And he doesn't spend a whole lot of money to get himself sick. Because we know you're going to get sick if you live like that. And I can see this coming over the television and it's great. I love it. They're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell you, listen, get off your couch. Get out from the telly and walk down the street, do something, ride your bike, go for a swim. And this is the answer to the problem. You, you can throw money at, at health as hard as you can go. But if you're going to live wrong, you're going to eat wrong, okay? You're going to finish up not like this. You're going to finish up in a big heap, okay? And I'm, I'm not healthy because I'm a great guy, I'm healthy because I eat right, okay? So that, I believe, is the number one. Could you be real quick, David? Yeah, yeah just, just very quick. Health is one of the main things with all of us that are standing up here right now. And I'm sorry, Anthony, whether you're Liberal or Labor, you have to toe the party line. When you're an individual, you can make a lot of noise and get a few things happening. Drew and Warrigal needs a new hospital. Nothing wrong with the old one. I was born there. It's a good start for me. But also Lee and Gaffer. It's got exactly the same problem just over the hill. Brand new hospital. Three quarters built. Three less beds open. And two less people because they can't afford to fill it. So it's not just the hospital. We've got to get the people there and the beds open as well. Health is very important for everyone. Thank you. David, while you're there, you might as well uh, kick this one off as well. Um, this is a fairly general one. Um, should more control, this is from an anonymous questioner, should more control be placed on the media to stop biased media moguls giving some uh, leaders an unfair advantage? And related to that, uh, what is your position on continuing support for community radio? That one's from Lynn. Community radio is very, very important. We've got Radio 80s in Carnbar, which I sponsor heavily, because it's most importantly, it gets everyone what's happening, what's going on in your own town. Whether it's Carnbar, Warrigal, Drewin, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the other bit of it, I don't totally understand, but um, I say it would be nice to be a um, fair playing field that if we had the same amount of money as Liberal and Labor to spend on their campaigns. At the end of the day, 
Um, it really comes down to what is in my heart and what I believe, not the spin that I want to tell you and never give you. The most important thing is any politician will always give you the world and at the end of the day he gives you an atlas. What the Cata Australia Party is all about is we're going to make sure if I stand up here and I say something, I am really passionate about what's happening and what's going on. If I don't know, I will tell you. But the most important thing, a squeaky wheel always gets oiled. Thank you. Anybody else wants to take up the issue of the media? Um, I think uh, I, I kind of like this question because we've got a fantastic local example. If you don't like the concentration of media ownership, um, start your own. <laughs> and um, here we are, we've got Will Coolidge, young man, um, and uh, you know, got the, the oomph to, to um, start up the Warrigal Citizen. Um, so I know the Greens have got a history of bleating about um, concentration of media ownership and, and the, the um, restricted diversity of opinion and so on. Um, but I, I, personally, I think um, uh, you know, we've got a great local example and um, uh, everyone should try it, perhaps. <laughs> uh, on community radio, Greens certainly um, uh, lobbied uh, to get the um, community radio supported with the recent um, changes and, and um, I believe that all got up. Uh, other process? Gary Pattinson, you're online. Uh, in terms of media coverage at the moment, um, there's a major issue. I've actually been in contact with the ABC, government owned. <laughs> um, federal election 2013, they're listing seven or eight of the 13 candidates on their election coverage. I sent them through an email and I said, well, fellas, it's either going to be all or none. So, you know, you've got, to have, you've got to have fair coverage. People have to know. As I was talking to a gentleman today, he said, people don't know. And the reason why people don't know is they're not being told. Because we do have a bias in the, in the media. We do have a bias within the two-party political system, you know, in terms of you know, Senator Online, where the, where, where the para term, Senator Online is a paradigm shift in Australian politics. We're the first political party in Australia's history, well, I'll, I'll rephrase that because in terms of, I believe, the first 30 years of, of federation, um, we did have re full representation of the people of Australia and the will of the people of Australia was represented. Uh, for the last 45, 50 years, that has been slowly being eroded away. Senator, Senator Online... Uh, is, is, as I said, a paradigm shift where the ones we introduced uh, electronic um, polling of every constituent within our electorates. So regardless of what um, the po policy policies are, I'm here, to, I'm here tonight. I've got, I've got no policies. I've got you. Because in terms of whatever I vote for in Parliament will be representative of the majority view of the people in Macmillan. It won't be party politics, it'll be you telling me what you want and I'll be taking that majority view to the halls of Parliament. So Gary, you're saying that you would uh, vote in Parliament precisely as the majority of the electors? Absolutely. Vote. I'd actually, uh, in terms of being a candidate for Senator Online, uh, part, of, part of my candidacy was my signing agreement with a sender online that I would only represent the view of the majority of electors. Um, in terms of, if I fail to do that, um, I, I can be, you know, taken to court sued because I've actually um, said that I'll, I'll, I will do that. So, okay. Um, anyone else want to take up the question of the media? Yep. Quickly. Just quickly. <coughs> Uh, the Palmer United Party has a big problem with the media. The only time that our leader Clive is heard of in the media is when in, they want to pick on him. The latest one is about the uh, printing of our electoral material. You know, we're a party that started four months ago we're, and uh, you know, we've done a lot of work since then. And as Clive said, where, else, where in Australia can I get six, uh, six million CDs printed in a week? Nowhere, because the Liberals and the Labors have taken the manufacturing offshore. So we can't do it here. 
And what the Clive wants to do is get the message out there so that we can get the manufacturing back into the country. But talking about community radio, well, I think we also need community TV. Down in Melbourne, they've got Channel 31. That is a fantastic channel. Right? They're not paid actors. A lot of them do volunteer work, same as the people here in the radios. So I think we need to, to broaden the community involvement in putting our media out there. Thanks. Um, the, uh, what we're going to have to probably make the final question is from Robert. Um, and he says, politics these days seems to be about selling votes, that is giving monetary incentives, which rather sounds like the last couple of questions we have, I might I suggest. What would you say is the correct way to go about winning votes as distinct from buying votes? Who'd like to take up that? I'll take that one. Huh? I'll take anything on. Problem is Rudd and Abbott won't talk to me. About getting votes is about talking to the people. Right? A lot of you probably don't know who I am because I don't have those big call flutes up. I'm not on TV yelling and screaming. I'm talking to people in the street. I'm handing out a business card. I'm telling them, if you've got an issue, you hear one of our policies or you're not sure on anything, ring me. Don't ring an office and talk to a secretary who says, oh, somebody will get back to you. It's all about the people. And that's what we need to do, is get more involved in the community, get people to know who we are, so that when they walk down the street, they go, g'day, Matt, how you going? Instead of, oh, there's that politician, dude. OK, so it's about getting back to the people. So if you see me out there in the rain, come up and get a business card off me. The general principle question of winning as against buying votes. My dictionary says that a politician has policies and we in Rise Up Australia have some really good policies which are coming out. Now, I know but especially the ladies. If they don't like me, they're not going to vote for me. It doesn't matter what I say. Okay, so I think one of the major things is you better get yourself light. The second thing is we become ministers. And a minister is one who serves. Okay, that's what a minister means. And we need to be uh, people who are willing to serve the electorate. And that's what I joined Rise Up Australia Party. One of the reasons is they are very humble people and they are ministers in the sense that they are willing to humbly serve the people. So I know that we need to be humble, we need to be liked and we need to have good policies. Okay? So that's what I'm working on. Quickly, uh, I promised we'd finish at 8.30. We're nearly there. No worries, just very quickly. Um, we got a little motto. Some companies don't like that and everything else. But um, a vote for me is a vote for you. And we've already said it here tonight and everything else like that. The idea is you come and see me, talk to us, and we will do the best we can for the community for your vote. Because one, I've got to get in there and have a go. Two, I wasn't born for this job. We all have to learn and start somewhere and everything else like that. So the most important thing is, is to be true about yourself, true about your party and be true to the voters. Thank you. Well, that sounded like a summary to me almost, but uh, I won't quite uh, hold you to that. Um, but we will need to move to summaries because we, uh, as I promised, we would wind up at about 8.30. It's nearly there. So if you could... Uh, provide a summary and we might as well again start with you uh, David as you were there um, you and hands, keep it we keep need it to ask these two questions you can ask them over tea I want to ask them on air can you start uh, David I want to ask you a question about agenda 21 no there's no vetting we want to ask the question My name is and I would like you, moderator, to ask people from the floor if they have any questions. Well, you have that. Sorry, here, here, here. Thank you. Um, I want um, to ask the party um, what obligation or pen what obligation or penalty penalty will be levelled levied 
against me if I fail to or not vote in, the fraudul in this fraudulent election. What's your Agenda 21 question? I'm asking you what obligation or penalty will be levied against me if I fail to or not vote in this fraudulent election? Quickly. Barry Pattinson, you're online. Uh, in terms of, uh, I won't be applying any penalty for you not voting in this election. A fraudulent election? Well, I'm, 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 I'm I'll, I'll won't, I won't be applying any penalty because that will be a matter for the government. Uh, and I'm not, a, I'm not an elected member at this point in time. What you're saying is you went to a we have an originating application here which has been put into the High Court to stop this election on grounds that you're in, there's been an implementation of Agenda 21 which is foreign to Australia and it hasn't been disclosed. Can we bring forward the application of the originating motion please? No, I don't think that that's yes, something to be can we just, we've asked I the question, yeah, give us the see. chance to respond, okay? I, I'm more than happy to see you afterwards and take a copy of what you, you wish to put forward, but, you know, you've got to understand that this is the system we're with. We all, we're all up here to, to tell you that it is... Oh, you talk me Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, you can speak to the candidates now, afterwards. No, if you continue fine. this way, we'll wind I'm up. prepared to, to go forward here. But at the moment, you've got a Liberal and a Labor, that's all you can choose from. You've got 12, 11 other candidates up here that want to make change. The one that we're all talking about, the Constitution. We're all talking about getting back to the people. So there's no point yelling and screaming about it. We're up here trying to do that, trying to make the change. Okay, going to the courts, the court, a lot of the courts are fraudulent too. Okay, so, okay, that's Liberal and Labor. That's not the Cater Party, it's not the Senator Online, it's not the Palm United Party, it's not the Greens. Okay? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, now, hang on. No, no, that's, look, that's fine, but this is not the platform to do it at. The platform is at federal level. We're going for the position. If we get the position, come to my office and bang the door down. I'll listen to you. But there's no point coming here and bagging us. We're standing, why aren't you standing up here to try and change it? Because we can't participate in the Kate. Come on. Can, can I, uh, Gary Patton, Senator online, can I, just, can I just request something in terms of, I know you've got, I know you've got issues and, and I'm, not, I'm not ignoring those, right? No, but in terms of, in terms of you, you, you try and present information to us, if you can just let us get through our, I think in terms of, particularly my summation is going to provide you with some information that you guys, uh, the people of Australia, haven't previously had access to. So if you can just let us get through the summations and then we can come back to your questions after that. Because this is, you know, in terms of, for us to be, to stop now, we're taking an issue, we're bringing in, we've got other people in the room that are here to hear what the candidates have to say. And um, so if you can give us that opportunity, um, I'll get David up to, to do his summation. Yeah. Summary? All right. I've got plenty of these if you'd like to take one. The main thing is for, for David Amor and the Catter Australia Party, um, yep, brand new, this is my first go at it, is please, our core values and principles are very, very simple and easy. It's protecting Australian jobs, it's building Australian industry, and it's also supporting Australian families. They are the most important things. We've got to look after ourselves. And um, please stay behind and talk to us all after because we'll be here for a fair while by the looks of it and we enjoy it. We enjoy the challenge. That's the reason why we're here. We know there needs to be a change. The Catter Australia Party is the right way to start that change. Thank you all and hopefully you'll vote for me number one. Thank you.
Jerry Patton sent it online again. <coughs> um, look, I just want to take an opportunity here to, to, to just I'd like to applaud the local branch of Get Up for their work in getting the people of Australia to not only get up but also to wake up um, to, to issues that directly affect them, their families and our Australian way of life. So, thank you. Uh, this is what I propose and promise to the people of Macmillan if elected. I am to deliver trusted decisions made by everyday people and encouraging a jury of you, the people, to study a topic in great detail and make a consensus recommendation to inform the vote. This helps to create an informed public without links to donors, without links to lobbyists and self-interest groups, which delivers a higher standard of decision making. Myself and other Senator Online members of Parliament and, and, and in the Senate um, vote in accordance with a clear majority vote, you, when making laws. Everyone on the AEC electoral roll will be able to vote on any or every new law or changes to existing laws in Australia. I believe that Australia was built by Australians and should be run by the people of Australia. We want to work with you to provide you with that opportunity and I also urge everyone to, uh, to read the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901. Could I just get a just a show of hands of who's read the uh, Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901? But just be careful with that because there's a lot of fraudulent ones out there like these people know about. You've got to get the original. You've, got to get the, you've definitely got to get the original because there, there have been certain... So if I can just finish off. <coughs> Senator Online... Um, okay, so as I said, read the Const uh, Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901. There's a copy on my web, web, website, garypatton.com.au. Um, Senator Online is a not-for-profit organisation, so anyone, if you'd like to donate to my campaign, I'd be rather ha very happy to accept your value donations following this forum, or you can do so directly from my website. Uh, there's more information. Now, this is, this is critical, because I'm not going to be able to get through everything tonight and explain how Senator Online works. So I'm asking you, as, as people within the Macmillan electorate, to, to visit um, either my site, garypatton.com.au. I've got some very nice little videos there that you can watch and it explains how Senator Online, work, online works. Or go to the senatoronline.org.au site um, to see what, what um, you know, direct democracy is going to do for Australia. We, we, we're, going to, we're going to end the two-party political system. There's no doubt. We've got these gentlemen here, these gentlemen here. There's, there's people are just tired. They've had a, a gutful and people are now standing up and saying, we want our voice to be heard in the halls of parliament. Um, once again, well, I'm just going to say thank you all for coming. Um, thank you to the organisers for inviting me. And remember, the Senator Online model is, um, is using the internet to allow people's voice to be heard all the time, not just at election time. And this is where politics needs to head. Thank you. Vote one, Gary Pat McMillan, and Senator Online, the Senate. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. With the Palmer United Party, we're here for the people. We're here to make change. If you're happy with the way the country's been running for the last hundred years, continue to vote the old guys in. Okay? But we're not here to do that. We're here to give you a third major party. We're here for a long time and you're going to start hearing more about us next week with our national launch on this weekend. But first of all, I'd like well, second of all, I'd like to thank all the candidates for coming along with the other six of them. Because right, there's a few out there, including our current standing member, that obviously didn't feel like coming. Because I changed their affairs to get here. So I'm sure whatever he had on, he could have changed. Okay, so the, the main issue is that we've got, and we're all touching on it, we're not happy with the way the system is. It needs to change. You know, we're talking about the Constitution. The Constitution got changed by the Liberal and Labor governments. Right? They don't tell you, they tell you you've got to have a referendum. They don't. They modify it. They were scared that they were going to get charged with treason. They moved treason out of the Constitution into the Criminal Code Act. Okay? Or because they've gone, oh, we might get in trouble. Now, this is wrong. It all needs to go back the way it is. And part of the United Party, as I said, 150 seats, that's of average Australians that want to get back to giving the power back to the people. Thanks. Get it away from now, I don't know. But, uh, goodness. 
Um, yes, I'm from one of the major parties. Yes, I'm from the Labour Party. Um, and I'm proud to stand here in front of all of you. Maybe you do not like two major parties. But I think I'm standing for the right major party. Just for three simple reasons. Especially for this area, this rural community, rural area like Mignon, which I've lived in all my life. My family lives in, I've worked in, and I've studied in. The MBN, National Broadband Network. Huge difference between major parties. We want to technology of tomorrow. They want to get back to the cars and put a band-aid on copper. And it's going to give us real, real solutions to the future, to give us more industry, more investment, and more opportunity for everyone in rural communities. And that's one passion area I hope to deliver if, I, if Labor and I get, get into uh, hopefully the next ten. Um, obviously, I mentioned before Gonski because it puts rural kids and sick kids on an equal platform because they do get more assistance um, to achieve because they're, they're disadvantaged because they're not in the major centres. So I really hope that we'll be able to um, uh, prevail on that footing. And obviously, climate change. Huge uh, issue for this area. Could we are uh, um, um, very um, fossil fuel intensive area and we need to transition out of that um, um, fossil fuel intensive uh, industries and especially for agriculture as well because of uh, extreme weather events we need to do our part and considering that per person we're the uh, largest uh, measure of emissions than anyone in the world so we have to do our part and create the technology of tomorrow so we can go into the 21st century that's what I'm about thank you Thank you, um, John Parker. Uh, um, I'm standing as an independent, and the reason why I'm standing as an independent is it scares the heck out of me if Abbott gets in. It scares the heck out of me. Um, this region was jeffed. We all remember how, how the area was completely devastated when he went through, followed by John Howard. John Howard was absolutely disgraceful, the way that he... Uh, and, and a lot of the mess that we're in, especially with our apprentices, he, he uh, cut the way that the apprenticeship was done, brought in new apprentices so that it didn't show up on, on his, his um, unemployment rates. So I, I'm, I'm an activist. I'll be an activist after this is finished. I wanted to make sure that the issues of Gippsland is on the table. They're important. We're going through huge changes. Like I said, we're going through. We're going to have peak timber. Uh, we're going to uh, lose at least one or two of the power stations within the next uh, 10 to 15 years. So those jobs will have to be transitioned into new areas. They can be. The, the uh, agricultural sector also needs to make huge transitions. That's big. And also with the new. With technology coming through, we need to be in front of all that. Because the changes in technology is as great as the changes in climate change, and they are intermixed. Houses and construction jobs, uh, buildings where they're built today, I said a hospital was only good for 30 years. I predict that some of the buildings where they're built today will only last 20 years because they'll be outdated. They will be too expensive to run with the new technologies that's coming. The technologies that we've got coming at us is like taking an iPhone into a nursing home and showing, get, expecting them, them to be able to use an iPhone. That's the way our businesses look. But the, our businesses don't have the time to train themselves up to the new technologies. And so it's important that we get in front of all that. It's important that we do that. Politicians, I will say, are not a politician. The politicians are like Eskimos. They follow the caravan. The biggest problem that Australia has today, the caribou are sitting on the grass, mooring, but they're not getting up off the grass and making the moves that needs to be moved. Where we need to start to move towards the new technologies, move towards the new uh, 20th, 21st century, over the next 10 years is so important that we get, get it all right now. So um, it's important that we get there. It's 
hopefully there's young people coming up through the ranks that will, will uh, make those changes as well, but we need to do that now. Thank you. Malcolm the Greens. Um, when I go around talking to people, I think the biggest group of people that um, approach me and talk are looking for an alternative to Labor and Liberal. Uh, and I think obviously there's 13, 13 candidates and lots of choice, but if you want strong action on climate change, if you want um, a fair go for asylum seekers, fair go for vulnerable people, um, access to healthcare and uh, education and mental health services, um, that doesn't, um, but it, where it doesn't matter how much money you've got, it, it should, we should have access for all, then the Greens, um, I hope you see us as a, as a strong alternative um, for your vote. Another thing to consider is that the, um, on some of the issues, I think Tony, Tony Abbott is, is really, um, as some of the others have said, quite scary in um, his attitudes on a lot of issues. I think his agenda is always going to be for big business uh, and um, part of the explanation for that may be because of the uh, donations to uh, the, his political party. Same for Labor. Labor makes the right noises but um, they lack the courage to follow through. You've seen the back downs on um, climate change, um, the back down on the mining tax um, and the subsequent need to um, take money out of the vulnerable people like the single parents. <laughs> um, so, okay, that's the wind up, but um, yeah, vote green then. <laughs> Boys up Australia is concentrating on the big picture. We're interested in the nation as a whole. We want to see our nation rise to the point where all other nations look up to us. To do that, I'll give you a picture of a friend that had a dream. He dreamt of this beautiful tree loaded with apples. People were under it was a big tree. People were under it shading from the sun, picking apples off. Even when a branch broke, the tree grew another branch. But then he realised nothing was being done to feed the roots. And he knew it was only going to be a short time and that tree would not produce apples anymore. And our community won't be able to produce what it produces if we don't look after the roots. Now whether we like it or not, we have a great constitution. It is, it, it is as good as any in the world. That's why we have such a good nation. Constitutions, good nations win their good constitutions. And that's the root of it. It's a Judeo-Christian constitution, whether we like it or not, we live with it. And it raises our people as we keep to our constitution, which has been proven for 200 years. We are the best democratic country in the world. We don't argue the point and shoot each other when we hand power over to another party. And we enjoy freedom that most countries have never dreamed of. And so we are like a tree. We've got to watch for our roots. And Rise Up Australia is looking all the time at the roots of our community and how we can feed those roots to grow a great community. So it's we'll be the envy of the world. So it's the big picture. It's the Commonwealth we're talking about. We're getting into the Commonwealth government. And we're looking after Australia. So that's why I love Australia. It's the best country to live in in the world. I've got a friend who's lived in 20 different countries. And he came out here and he said, I just love it. I just love it. And he's fallen in love with this country and so have I. Because you go in all the world, this is the best corner. And we don't need to be fools and sell our country out. We need to be sensible like farmers. Right? Guys that run farms got common sense. And we're losing our farmers. They're killing themselves. So Rise of Australia is really looking at the roots. We're looking at our farmers. We're looking at our small business. We're looking at our small business. And we're looking at everything we can to weld this nation together so it can be the pride of the world. Thank you for listening to me. Please vote one way that way.
Thank you. We've run uh, somewhat over time, and uh, so I'll just very quickly say thank you to all the candidates for coming. Uh, thank you to uh, for coming tonight. Um, you are very welcome to stay for a cup of tea and to share the information that you have. Um, and also thanks to BBR FM and to Royal Citizen for streaming us live and for broadcasting us. Um, thank you all again.